But yeah, it, I, I thought great showcase match, for, especially for Quinn, Alex, mm-hmm. Jack, and CJ, because it, it, it really showed us some some of the graduates from the Top Talent Wrestling Academy and showing what these mm-hmm. guys are really capable of. And I really love seeing like who's coming next and who can, mm-hmm. can we come, see come up in the local independence thing. That's what I really love seeing. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Chop Talk. I am your co-host, Andre C. And right over here is my co-host, Melba. How you doing, Melba? I am doing great, Andre. We just had an amazing week of some wrestling here. We just got to meet up for a show yesterday that we're going to talk about on Chop Talk right now. Man, what a great night. I was very pleasantly surprised. Not to say that I went in with like low expectations, mind you, because mm. like I was pretty happy that I'd on paper kind of gotten exactly what I wanted and then got a little disappointed, but not really disappointed. It was a weird night. It was a weird good night. Let's get into it, Andre. But before that, how are you doing? I'm doing actually wonderful. I got I went to the theater today, so yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's I, why you're wearing your fancy shirt. Yeah, I figured I'd class it up. Like you, you're always classing it up on here, looking all all, all fly and everything. I'm I'm just in a t-shirt, oh. so I I figured you know it's collar on today. <laughs> it's popping. Yeah, pop that collar. <laughs> but we are here to talk about top talent pro wrestling from Mm -hmm. thursday april 13th mavich evil uno uh vinnie marciella mazzaro mazzaro is a mazzaro okay i I, it's all it's all italian come on ma più bella you're, you're talking about Julia and Thecla there. <laughs> there you go. And the man, man, a man who's not on the poster, Jordan Oliver, was on this show too. GCW Jordan Oliver. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely tremendous night of professional wrestling. Again, it's in a, a bar in Edmonton called Midway, but it is an all ages show. So, mm-hmm. to anybody watching, if you have fan, like, young kids and you want to bring them out, there was a baby at this show. <laughs> yes, there was an infant there. They start them young, you guys. Start them young. And we kick it off with our first match of the evening. It is a four-way match between Lumberjack Larry Woods, Bobby Sharp, the returning Bobby Sharp, mm-hmm, Nasty mm-hmm. Nate Nixon, our, one of our personal faves. I think Mel's like number one favorite wrestler in Alberta right now. <laughs> I, it, it, that's arguable. Yeah, I would have to say that's probably pretty accurate, actually. I, I mean, Bobby Sharp. After this match, though, uh, the, hmm, that might be pretty up there. The guy, the guy's looking pretty good. And he wrestled pretty great. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I would have to say Nate is probably my favorite, though. I mean, we are the nasty section. We always dance for nasties. Intro, we love his nasty plex. But yeah. also, don't forget the Mr. Birdman. Yeah, Mr. Birds Aren't Real himself, Eli Surgeon on this show. And, man, he got a great reaction with the Birds Aren't Real thing. Like, it, it, it's over mm-hmm. everywhere he goes. I mean, it, he's a great wrestler. I mean, they kind of comes out a little, a little, a little questionable. He's a little, a little kooky, maybe. But like, you know, Andre, I felt this match was incredible. What an opener! And then the fucking Larry. Yeah, well, I, like Larry is the only heel in this match, really, because the crowd was very against Larry for this entire <laughs> match. It might have something to do with the fact that he kept doing the second thing to them. I just, I just. Throwing it out there, I don't know. <laughs> it might be a mutual disrespectful. I was yelling, I was chanting, "Birds aren't real," and Larry yelled at me, "You're drunk." I'm like, "No, I'm not I'm drinking ginger ale." And he went, "Meh." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hope you weren't, because you drove me home. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I was not drinking. No. <laughs> Moving on, though, this match was absolutely incredible. I really enjoyed the beginning. Uh, Mr. Shug, Serge. I kept calling him Shug. I don't know why. I was calling him Shug all night. Eli I don't know Shug. why. Eli Shug, I, sir. Hey, I mean, his gear, I really enjoy his gear, the little kind of cosmic kind of design on it. Um, wrestled very, very well, um, giving little hats to everybody. 
-hmm. Except for Larry, but you know, I mean, honestly, Larry kind of needed it the most, though, for that little bald spot on the back of his head. <laughs> and then once he said that, all I could think of was like SpongeBob SquarePants. Do you remember the movie? No, I never saw it. Oh, there's a part where King Neptune actually has like a bag over his head to hide his bald spot. And when he takes it off, the light reflecting on it is so bright that everyone just starts screaming, bald, 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 bald. And that was all I could think of. <laughs> yeah. But bless him, his mustache is bushy. Yeah, he's got a pretty glorious mustache. I will give him that. Yeah, that thing slicks thicker than a snicker, that thing. Yeah. And and he's a pretty damn good professional wrestler. I have like, to agree. In it, like in the ring, the guy can go. He may be a kind of a scumbag in real life. Even though I am, I love the rad. Kind of a scumbag, but he he he's a damn good professional wrestler. All four of these men, I think it absolutely turns. There was a great spot. Mm -hmm. Where Eli starts sunset flip Nate, who ends up German suplexing Bobby Sharp at the, like yes. all at the same time. Oh, absolutely perfect spot. Like, yes, yes. Yeah, and of course um, we did get to see our nasty plex, mm -hmm. my Mister that's, Nasty Nate, and we got to see him tenderize some titties, <laughs> mostly shugs. Yeah, it was mostly <laughs> Eli and some to Larry. Didn't really. Like he he chopped Bobby a couple times, but I wouldn't really call them titties because those are pretty solid pecs he's got going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. Those are yeah, those are solid. Those are solid. And a fresh fresh tan and fresh wax for Mister Sharp on his review. Yeah, this he was stacked and ready for this match. I was very mm -hmm. impressed, as you said, all four competitors, such incredible athletes. This was one hell of an opener. Yeah, uh, and in the end, Bobby Sharp did pick up the victory with a frog splash to Lumberjack Larry Woods and gets the win, then kicks the mic from Ivan after the match mm -hmm. and calls out the man who helped him rehabilitate. And it's Andy Anderson, everybody's favorite. Come on. Everybody and loves Andy. He got a good chant, man. The crowd was chanting for him when he came out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. he gets in, and then he ended up beating up Bobby. Yeah, after the nice, you know, sweet little reunion, hug, hug, kiss, kiss, you know, yay, yay in the corner, woot, woot, and then boot, boot. Yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. like really worked that knee over. So Yeah, the knee and that um, ankle, because he, he came back from that torn Achilles, wasn't it? I think so. Or maybe we're confusing him with Andreas. I don't know. <laughs> I mean... Everyone's got it. Everyone's capable of breaking it, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm very interested in seeing Andy versus uh, Bobby for sure. Mm -hmm. 100%. 100%. And arguably the first real kind of, I want to say, big story kind of feud to kind of come out of our top talent wrestling since its conception. Um, you know, there's been those kind of, you know, subtle feuds, you know, with T.Y. holding the briefcase and and Ava and Masha. But I feel like this was an old, like, I want to say like a classic setup, like something you would see from that kind of style of 90s wrestling. And I'm, I'm kind of living for it because I've missed seeing Andy Anderson in the ring. Oh, I know yeah. he has been with other um, organizations that I don't watch, so I don't give. Only, only once. He was only there once. And at, at regardless, um, I've been missing Andy, and I've been missing him since his days in PWA with that kind of heel attitude and heel mentality. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how um, Bobby works with this, because Bob works very, very well with people like Andy Anderson. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I expect very, very good things to come out of this. What do you think, Andre? I I think it's going to be absolutely stellar match. Andy is like the consummate professional worker, and Bobby is just this incredibly <laughs> underrated talent in, in all mm -hmm. of professional wrestling that I cannot wait to see the two of them hook it up. 100%. Yeah. So we're going to move on to the second match of the evening. It's Snug Life, Vinny Massaro versus Crude Oil, Cody Mack. Okay, so the last time Vinny was here, I missed his match because they did the, he did the opener, and I missed it because I was at work and I had to get there from work. Um, you didn't miss much. And when this guy came out, all I could do was go, come on. 
Like it was a more that's a more A's coming out too. And I'm like, what a I mean Cat and I enjoyed it. Yeah, but I just just the way he acted in the and I'm like, this guy's a fing joke. And then the match happened. Hello. I will say I was completely wrong about this guy. Cause and again, I'm not shaming because again, big man myself, but I saw this kind of round dude coming out to that's a more. So I was kind of expecting a Yano. Like goofy Yano shit. Like that's what I was kind of expecting from the character and fair, fair. the look. And holy shit, this guy is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. These two mm -hmm. had a killer match. Vinny, like he smacks the crap out of people. He's got like it's, it's just the European uppercuts coming off this guy, like rivaling Saber, dude. Like just cracking Cody with those uppercuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just and then a beautiful, and then followed up with like this beautiful butterfly suplex, dude. Like, I don't know. And then he it was at one point, Cody was running in and he just caught Cody and just exploded him into the corner. And like, mm -hmm. Cody like looked like laying on his head. I'm like, oh my god, but it was like <laughs> absolutely great. And this guy really surprised me. But then, mm -hmm. Cody, I've missed watching this guy for a long while now. He's so good. Um, like that, that off the shoulder, double knee, knee gut buster, dude, so good. And then, like, Vinny hitting this like angle slam into like a driver, like a was it like almost into like Pentagon's Made in Japan driver, like Shingo Takagi's Made in Japan. But he had him up in the angle slam position and brought him down into like a. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was absolutely tremendous. But mm -hmm. the end of the. Cody Mack channeling his inner Goldberg hits the spear, hits a jackhammer, gets a big victory here. Uh, like, absolutely awesome match. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I was like actually very excited to see uh, Vinny Massaro this time because the first time we saw him around, I definitely didn't feel that we saw the absolute best that we could have for him. It, I I remember saying that it, it was just an opener. Um, it wasn't great bad it was it was just there um this match was a definite step up and it quickly went into a very strong style um kind of match very very quickly which i think is why we enjoyed it as much as we did mm -hmm. um yeah Vinny mazzaro i really really enjoyed how he he worked last time i really really enjoyed how he worked this time i loved his intro Cat and I were just a singing and a swaying and just a gaga -ga 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 -ga. we were having a great time um this was actually my f second time um, ever seeing Cody Mack as this character um, mm -hmm. live. Um, I've seen him once before as, as like some, I don't know, some pretty boy. Your Chimera, Chimera Cody, uh, Chimera Cody Mack is what his gimmick was before. He was like the Chimera. He was doing oh, the no, 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 no. This is, no, oh. this is a different thing. He's with some big group down south. And, oh, um, uh well, with Johnny Scotty Divine Scotty Mac or something that I don't know. Yeah, I've seen Divine him perform in that. If I have to choose between seeing that character and the crude oil character, I feel the crude oil character had more bravado. It had more something relatable. It had something fun. It had, and then just I mean, look at him. The guy is jacked as all hell. Um, very entertaining, kind of, <laughs> I was joking with Kat, he kind of looked like a young Chris Parrish, if Chris Parrish was 20, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I actually really enjoyed Cody Mack in this, um, again, this was my second time kind of seeing him wrestle as this character, and the first time I saw him, I don't, I didn't feel that there was anything kind of overwhelming that kind of stood out from that match, but I believe it was a multi-person match. So there really wasn't much of an opportunity for him to stand out. Um, this match, Vinny really put him through the ringer. There was actually one point where I was pretty sure that Cody got dropped on his head um, for the, one of those drivers that Vinny did on the middle of the ring there. Holy hot diggity. I really loved this match. This was a... Whew, this was a ride. This was a ride. Yeah, this was my surprise match tonight. But mm -hmm. I know what you're saying with Cody Mack. He was with Johnny Divine down in Calgary. Oh, that's the now. Okay, yeah. And it's, it's very much like an evolution kind of stable. Divine's the veteran bringing up the young guys. It's very much that kind of feel to it. Um, mm. But then the I know you've seen him before. He tagged with Chris Parrish at the first ever clandestine wrestling show. 
Uh, you, uh, was that the very first match? Because if it was the first match, I was yeah. actually abandoned oh, at the front door. Oh, I think it was <laughs> like working the, the tickets first match, when yeah. I was not supposed to even be working. So um, yeah, I actually didn't catch that match. Yeah, he would team up with Chris Jericho on that show. <laughs> it's Chimera Cody. Um, I thought he was at the Chimera. I don't. I can't remember, but yeah. Ah, you yeah. know, it would make sense. I mean, they look like they could be brothers. Yeah, they're very similar in look, especially when Cody was wearing that gear he was wearing then. It, it was like, okay, there's a match here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see the similarities but, for sure. Again, absolutely, like stand, one of the standout matches to me, just because. Mm -hmm. And he surprised me, man. Mm -hmm. he's pretty spry yeah so we move on to a triple threat match right in the destroyer versus jordan oliver this is ty jackson mm -hmm. again this was two guys flying around and Raiden just being a perfect base like catching these guys and just oh my god this was just a fun mat really fun match mm-hmm mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm a big Jordan Oliver fan. Um, I was hoping to see him um, with White Shirt um, on this show. That was the the kind of match that I did want. Unfortunately, we did see um, when Bobby and uh, the Andy Anderson um, spot did happen. We did find out that he was injured and on a crutch, mm. which sucks. I really wanted to see him against Oliver. However, speedy recovery to um, White Shirt there. Hopefully, we'll see you at the next show. Um, I believe it was June. Eighth, yes, yeah, so I have a cur cur graphic at the end, so I'll show everybody. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> you're, you're right. Um, Raiden Gandy was like, um, I almost called him a lurker because he was just kind of milling about a little bit and then he would catch people and do something and then disappear for a little bit. Um, I I've definitely felt that Oliver and Jackson kind of showcased a little bit more in this match. Um, how freaking incredible, though, is Jordan Oliver pulling those clout cutters out of freaking nowhere? Yeah, dude, when he hit that clout cutter on Ty, he he, he looked like he killed Ty Jackson there. Like Ty landed on his head almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Holy, that was a face first kind of deal. Yeah, like he hit that clout cutter to Ty, and then Raiden in slides in, picks up Jordan, choke bombs the shit out of him. And pins him one, two, three. Like, I was like, this guy, like, Raiden's been very smart in picking his spots. Mm -hmm. in his multi-man match, like, he'll slide in, hit, hit something big, then slide up. Because he slid in, hit an F5 earlier in the match, and then mm -hmm. couldn't get the three there. But then he kind of disappeared. Like, he's very much picking his spots, which I don't mm -hmm. blame him for. He he's lurking. Win. Lurking in the shadows and popping in when he needs to. Getting solid wins. And again, I love seeing Jordan Oliver. He's one of my favorite parts about GCW. Again, when I watch GCW, it's for guys like Alex Zane and Jordan Oliver. It's not for the hardcore crazy shit. But he's like just watching. I want Jordan Oliver back here more because I just want to. I love seeing him wrestle. Like I'll, mm -hmm. I'll watch him wrestle pretty much anybody except maybe two people. But I, I, I'm I'm willing to watch him watch wrestle almost anybody. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll keep that to myself. I'll tell you off air. <laughs> now I'm curious. But we are going to move on to a <laughs> six-person tag match. It's Team Cathon Hees uh, teaming up with Jack O'Connor, and which is the guy with no shirt on, and, <laughs> and, his par and, and their partner, CJ King, with the guy with the red and black singlet. With the crown. On, yeah, with the crown. Because he's a king. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Taking on Team Hoxley, which is Quinn Hoxley, Alex Rain, and Jesse Youngblood. This match was a very big. I'm. I must say, this was a showcase match for Alex Rain. Mm -hmm. and, and arguably King. Yeah, King too, and Hoxley to a point too, because she was in there early, just smashing the shit out of King. Like spinning mm -hmm. back fists and like she was looking really good early on in that match. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, um, yeah, hundred percent. She she was definitely in the beginning and she was definitely in the end. Um, the deciding factor, obviously. Um, yeah, the the stuff that she did at the beginning, very very impressive. Um, but the for me the standout was King. Um, oh, yeah. I felt like he spent most of the time for his team in the ring and he did some really cool freaking stuff when he was in there um definitely has also uh, leaned out a little bit his gear is fitting 
uh, a little loose on him. He's looking phenomenal um, as he's kind of coming up through the ranks here. Um, and I always forget, his, you know, Connor was the other one? Uh, Jack O'Connor, yeah. Jack O'Connor. His kicks, man. Holy dang. Those things are deadly. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the queen for one second. Kat Von Hees, that powerhouse of a woman. I love watching her wrestle. And that green hair on her right now looks phenomenal. And she, she wrecked Quinn's day for a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. She wrecked people's days for a little bit. Well, I'll give a big props to, to Quinn because she, and, and we only used it for one person. She was tenderizing them titties on all three of her opponents. <laughs> Dude, just wrecking them with the chop. Like her chops are very good. Like she mm. hits. They're kind of they're kind of nasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nasty. But oh, and uh, when part of that Quinn towards the end hitting a rainmaker on Kathleen He's love that one. Yeah, yeah. I would have liked to see her maintain a little bit more wrist control, but it is the queen you're knocking down. Cap Von Heese is a little hard to maintain that. Um, but yeah, it, it, just the ending of this, very surprising to me. On Yeah, like there's a lot of fracas going on with people hitting moves and going, and then mm -hmm. I don't know, when just gr grabs Cat, who's kind of distracted, rolls mm -hmm. her up into a small package, gets a win out of nowhere, and bang, the crowd just exploded. Like, Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely mm -hmm. phenomenal from all the competitors in this match. But like, mm -hmm. I gotta give standouts to CJ, to CJ and Alex because like Alex was there was a good seven to eight minute stretch where mm -hmm. Alex couldn't get a tag to his partner, so they kept getting knocked off the apron or he's being isolated in the other corner and mm -hmm. just took a hell of a beating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how smart of it was for that team of Team Von Hees to alienate rain like that keeping him away from that corner doing everything they could and there was points where it was a little hard rain was fighting very very hard to get over to that corner they had to work double time to keep him away from it mm -hmm. eventually he did get in there man when jesse got in there holy dang things started going crazy yeah it just ran over but yeah it, I, I thought great showcase match for, especially for quinn alex mm -hmm. jack and cj because it, it, it really showed us some some of the graduates from the top talent wrestling academy and showing what these mm -hmm. guys are really capable of and i really love seeing like who's coming next and who can, mm -hmm. can we come see come up in the local independence things that's what i really love seeing it's incredible to to note just how good these trainees are coming out of Top Talent Academy for as, as little as they have been there or as long as they've been there. You know, some of them have been training since before COVID, some of them after. It's absolutely incredible to see how good they are. They're performing at such a level that you wouldn't know that they just graduated. Yeah, they're absolutely phenomenal. Like mm -hmm. they all look really smooth. We've been seeing Alex for about two, three shows now, mm -hmm. and he is just like, like uh, his selling is absolutely amazing. Like he mm -hmm. takes a beat nobody's business, man. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. Yeah, but absolutely phenomenal match. We're gonna move on to the top mm -hmm. talent wrestling championship match, street fight, defending champion Masha Slamovich, the current GCW champion, also by the way, mm -hmm. taking on. Alberta's own Ava Lawless. Dude, this was a great match. These women just mm -hmm. smashed the hell out of each other, smacking each other with chairs, garbage cans, garbage lids, cookie sheets, like a door, a table. Like, dude, just so much great stuff in this match, mm -hmm. man. These women just kill each other. Like, Ava at one point spearing Masha through a door. Oh, mm -hmm. I was like, Ugh. I, I, I'm instead of screaming Gorg, I was screaming door, door, <laughs> door. It was I loved it, man. I love watching these two two wrestle in there because they I think I find they have really good chemistry and their hair kind of matches too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's definitely more red in Masha than um, than Ava, but 100% they did have the matching um, orange streak in the front there. Um, that table, hella sus. Hell is sus looking. They, that thing was on its way out. It needed to be put out of its misery. What better way than to just throw two beautiful women through it, right? Yeah, the, um, the band-aid. 
the banding on the outside would start like like around the edge was like I mean, falling off. The of it was not okay. It didn't want to stand up. Smalls had to get in there and fix it. Oh, he, that was funny. I mean, I mean, what, <laughs> what, what? He wouldn't be a top talent show if there wasn't some form of chaos, though. That was oh. that was an appropriate level of chaos. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was a fun one. It was definitely all over the place. These girls took it inside the ring, outside of the ring, all around, upside down. They're screaming everywhere. It was it was fantastic. The crowd was so into it. Um, the kids, yeah. This this was a really really fun match. The kids though, when they <laughs> when Ava tried to get a. A little kid to give her his foot, their or her their foot to smash off. The kid was like pulling back, and they were scared. And so then he just like he took his shoe off and handed it to her. But like, I mean, there was one little girl who was like, "Here, take mine." Yeah, and I was just like, the only one brave out of all of them was the little girl. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, show how much tougher you am than than them. <laughs> like I was like, yes, do it. Yes, you're tougher than them. But it was absolutely hilarious. But in the end, Ava ends up power bombing Masha through. Like she gets slid, slides out of the corner, power bombs Masha through the table, mm -hmm. the pinfall victory. Ava Lawless is now once again your top talent wrestling champion. True that. True that. And then it was followed by a fun little segment of the. I don't even know how long he's had that briefcase now. T.Y. Jackson coming in, attacking Ava. Um, wasn't that one like in one of the like first or second shows? Well, okay, so Ava won the title in a ladder match in last summer, and then I think it was the following show in October that Ty won the briefcase. Mm -hmm. So he's had it for a few shows now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he came in, did his little spiel. I mean, obviously for time, couldn't have another match, um, but like just just gonna put out there that like you know it's cool that he beat her up and everything and you know good job that sounds so bad I, well I, I mean <laughs> wrestling right <laughs> um but like it, it's good that he got in there it's good that he did his thing but like you have a briefcase it, it, the concussion you got two months guy the concussion's gonna heal she's gonna heal she's gonna cut now she's pissed like my guy should have taken advantage of it. I will. I will give you that. But he's a really rad dude. He's not going to be a, well, cheat, I a mean, cheater. One of them and rad's got to like have that. at least half a brain to tell him what to do with this man. Like, come on, she's gonna heal up. Now you've just shook the hornet's nest. That girl is going to come out of the gates running, and she's coming out fuming and furious. She's gonna kick the crap out of him. I look forward to this match. Like Ty Eva, they're going to burn the house down with that title like if that's not the main event i i, I don't understand wrestling anymore because like that, <laughs> like that match is going to be absolutely I mean, and i don't think anybody can get in bigger to to face harlem babat well we'll talk about who they got but i don't think they're bigger than this than that title match in my opinion I think who they're bringing in is absolutely phenomenal, mm -hmm. but not bigger than that title match. One would think. One would think. So we're going to move on to the semi-main event of the evening. It is Gabriel Lissette mm -hmm. taking on Mitch Clark. So early on in this match, Mitch was just, like, Gabriel was giving everything to Mitch. Like, just laying in all everything. And Mitch was just not having any of it. Mitch is, it's the ultra violence in him. Like he was taking every shot, getting beat up to heck, and just walk keeps walking through it all. Like Gabriel just didn't have much there. I didn't see like they had a good chain wrestling at the start, but once he started trying to strike in, Mitch was like, "No, no, no! You don't try to strike me. You don't try to hit me." But mm -hmm. it, I thought really there's a really good spot. Tear, there's a beautiful looking teardrop suplex by Gabriel to Mitch, dropping him on his head. Um, and then there's a spot where um Gabriel got hurt his shoulder looked like in the mat like I don't know if it was like but Mitch was really working over that shoulder and when uh Gabriel went for the tarantula couldn't grip in the second arm because of the shoulder injury we got really on there um Mitch with a great ring to Saturn I, th I thought it might have been over right there just due to the shoulder and but no um Gabriel did fight out but in the end 
uh, Mitch crotches Gabe on the top rope. He bites him like he's biting him, which is usually to the other way around with Gabriel. And and then uh, Gabriel steps out, goes for a razor's edge. Then Mitch like slides down, gets a Cobra clutch and lifts him up into the Cobra clutch slam and picks up the victory, a big solid victory for Mitch Clark here. Um, very much looking forward to see what Mitch Clark does next. Cause like, I think he's making a case for himself that he should be challenging for that top talent championship after whatever happens with uh, Ava and uh, T.Y. Hmm. Just That's if it's nice. just if it's T.Y., I don't think he will because they're boys. They're rad together, right? They're they're both rad. So he'll convince him to lay down. You never you never know. You never know. <laughs> Clark is the leader of the rad, so you never know. But we're gonna move on to the main event of the evening. It's Evil Uno versus Harlan. Mm -hmm. I like. Hey, I bet. So, a couple months ago at the February show, on when they announced Evil Uno, Andreas was just like, "Oh God, no!" And he was so mad because he's not a fan of Uno. But for a lot of people, they've only seen Uno in AEW, which I'll admit, for the most part, um, like he's not the strongest member of his team. When it comes to like Stu Grayson is absolutely tremendous, but even Luna's very, very good. And he proved it here tonight. Like he was so over with this crowd. Like he had, there was those three girls on the, on the side to the right of us that were just mm -hmm. so into it. And, and one girl at one point is going evil. Ooh, no evil. Ooh, no. And the way she was saying it was just funny. And it was just, but they were so into it. And they were so mm -hmm. behind him. And, Harlan got a little heavy tonight. If you catch my drift, ah, ah, <laughs> hold on. So buffering, buffering, buffering light bulb. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, I noticed that as well. I kept telling you, heavy Harlan. Who? Yeah. Harlan, what? That's heavy. Goddamn metal coming out right there. Mm-hmm. Like, it was very much, he was back to that old, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. I don't give a shit about you at all kind of attitude again. And I really love, kind of, I love seeing that attitude out of Harlan again. Because I mm -hmm. haven't seen it in a good long while. And it was great to watch. And mm -hmm. Evil Uno, so good. Both these guys, absolutely tremendous in this ring. Beautiful x by by, Har by Harlan in this. Um mm -hmm. Uno catches a kick and then hands it to, to Smalls and then just jumps up and hits this beautiful neck breaker, just mm -hmm. driving Harlan down on that neck. Absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The rolling elbows by mm -hmm. Evil Uno. Ooh, they were solid. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you heard that smack every time he hit him. Mm -hmm. uh, Harlan hits the power bomb, hits the 450. I think it's over. Uno kicks out at two. I'm and I'm just like, yes, because like Harlan's <laughs> been on a dominating streak. The only man person he's lost to, I think, is Josh Alexander when he was here in December. Masha also retained because of Uno's interference over Harlan. Daddy. Oh, okay, yeah. Last show there was mm -hmm. the the music going on, but I I kind of give that was when he nearly threw me over the freaking barricade. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I shook the barricade. It happens. You shook me, not the barricade. I was oh, holding on to the barricade. <laughs> I, I forgot. No, that was this time when I was shaking the barricade. You got mad at me. <laughs> no, you were shaking me, who was holding on to the barricade. That's why the barricade was moving. Oh, but no. And when he got, and hardly end up spitting in the face of Uno. Mm. It's like a huge rolling elbow, but can't get the win. And you start trading these really stiff strikes. Uno ends up hitting not one, but two vicious pile drivers to mm -hmm. Harlan Abbott and picks up the victory. Crowd was so happy. Like, oh, great <laughs> to cap off the night. Andreas, you're, you're, you missed a tremendous match. I mean, we can't blame Andreas. He did kind of completely separate his Achilles tendon from its place of being <laughs> we can forgive him oh i'm forgiving it but he was he was poo-pooing evil uno before ever watching him in the ring in person so i mean I, you know sometimes 
sometimes it's it's true. Sometimes it's not. In this case, definitely a uh, missed on that one. Um, they were doing that shoulder block thing at the, the beginning where they were just bouncing off the ropes, hitting each other's shoulders. That was a lot of fun, especially when they started to both get like vocal about the dissatisfaction of it. Uh, made for a really fun little spot. Um, but yeah, the, those pile drivers by Uno were just, oof, nasty looking. But yeah, I have to agree with what you said about the the attitude of Harlan Abbott and seeing that kind of heavy metal-esque attitude come out in him. It's definitely something that I prefer to see um, other than the, the silent kind of healer, let me heal you. It, it hasn't been something that's overly been interesting to me just because it feels similar to other things. Um, and I, I don't feel that Harland Abbott is one of those similar to other things kind of guys. So to, to see that attitude kind of come in, it set him apart again. And it was very, very nice to, to see in this match. And what a way to, to close out this show. A hundred percent, because these two absolutely killed it. And mm -hmm. then Ivan got back in the ring, mm -hmm. getting ready to send us all home happy. And they put a graphic up on the screen. And who's coming next month? It's Effie, ladies and gentlemen. One half of Bussy is tag team with Ali Catch. I am excited. This guy has, like, for the LGBTQ community, this guy has been a really big, uh, like, positive to professional wrestling for that because he is like but that wasn't i'm not saying i i'm not saying it's not normal but he's normalized a lot of gay and lesbian wrestlers in in getting into these big spots um that you have, didn't really see a lot before and i've loved that he has been so widely accepted by so many people and that mm -hmm. i can wait for this guy to come here to alberta i cannot wait to watch him because i think this guy is absolutely tremendous I know you haven't gotten to see much of them, but... No, no, I've actually never seen him at all. Oh, there you go. Um, I just don't watch anything that I think he's... I've heard the name, and I've seen pictures of him, because I do follow um, Dark Sheik, who we were also introduced to through Top Talent Wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, I know she wrestles extensively with him. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I do know that... I've seen pictures of him, but I, I honestly and admittedly has not, have not seen any matches. So I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, he he's just a tremendously fun wrestler to watch. Like I I I, I mm -hmm. laugh I I I, I at some of the stuff he does, but he's a really good in ring guy. I I look for. I'm very excited to see Effie. Bought my ticket that same night because they had a special going on for a couple of days. Where if you went to uh, toptalentwrestling.com slash June or top talent yeah toptalentwrestling.com slash June, you get mm -hmm. your ticket for fifteen dollars and well sixteen. 20 with tax but dang I, I was i bought my ticket already because effie was a was a perfect attraction for me i love this guy i think he's absolutely phenomenal and knowing top talent i mean they do have two months to to promote this they're undoubtedly i mean we got four names on the, the last show we're undoubtedly going to get a few more announcements coming in between now and then hopefully they'll they'll maybe drop those in like may or something I know they did announce another gentleman coming in, but I'm not familiar with who that is. Never really seen him before. I think Brian I mean, Keith was the name. Brian Keith, that's something like that. I didn't mm -hmm. get. I don't. I'm not familiar with the gentleman, so I, I didn't. I mean, he looks like a cowboy. I'm sure he'll fit in. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I'm very much looking forward to next month with mm -hmm. Top Talent Pro Wrestling because we're going to be back Thursday, June 8th, and I'm excited. Mm -hmm, and I just and can't that's hide my it. birthday week, so we're gonna have some fun. Go out, cupcakes. Maybe Mel will remember the night. Maybe cupcakes. Cupcakes. I'm bringing I cupcakes. cupcakes. I'm bringing cupcakes that night. Come on. As long as I don't end up wearing the cupcakes, I'll be fine with that. We'll make Andreas wear them. <laughs> <laughs> this is your punishment for missing the show, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you blow out your Achilles. You get showered with cupcakes. <laughs> but we have come to an end for another edition of chop talk thank you all so very much for joining us uh we appreciate all of you joining us here we and i do if you are joining us on backbreaker video right over hit right up here we really do appreciate it. our good buddy mike the ref 
lots of amazing content from Mike. Where the heck is this thing? There it is. Lots of great content. You can check him out at twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref. Lots of great gaming streams. He has his weekly Wednesday AEW watch along stream. You can check him out over on youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore gaming. All his gaming content is re-uploaded there. And you might and you, Hopefully you're what you're 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 going to watch youtube.com slash at backbreaker video. And if you are watching us there, you might want to go over to youtube.com slash Andre and Melba wrestling talk and check out our YouTube page. Give us a follow, give us a like, give us a subscription or subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. And if you are watching on Andre Melba wrestling talk, please give us a like, please subscribe to the channel and please leave a comment down below because we want to hear from you. That's what we love. We love acting with all the fans mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you attended the top talent show let us know which show you or which uh, match you enjoyed the most and why down in the comments down below there and andre if there are people are wanting to see you anywhere else whether on social media or other shows where are they going to find you well across the bottom you can see twitter at that kind of guy instagram at that canada dude mastodon and hive at that canada guy Mm -hmm. And you can find me on Andre Melba Wrestling Talk on YouTube and Facebook. You can contact me there, too. And what other shows do you have going? We've got something going on with our good friend, O.L. Ed. Yeah, with O.L. Ed, I got uh, Marvel Talk coming back in a couple weeks. We're going to be reviewing Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy over on O.L.E. Looking forward to that. And uh, coming up this weekend, actually, I'll be doing a show over on O.L.E. with... Uh, our good friend Andre is talking uh, the Power Rangers 30th and 30 year anniversary special. Once and always a Ranger. And I'm, we're, we're thinking about having a guest or two on. So I'm going to reach out to a couple people. So well, we'll, we'll, we'll see who we're going to, you'll see who that's going to be. But I'm, I'm very much looking forward to doing that show with Andre. It's talking the Power Rangers. Go, go, Power Rangers. You're going to. You're going to see Power Ranger shirts up here. It's going to be the first time in a long time these shirts have changed. You know I have a Marfa, right? Oh, ho, ho. Maybe, that, maybe that's a hint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And if you're wanting to follow a Melball on social media, you can find her on Twitter at Collins Melball. You can find her on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Mastodon at Melball Collins. You can also catch me on our good friend, the lovely, the talented Astrid Pizarro, the natural, on her YouTube channel at Astrid Pizarro there for the Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We are going to be releasing an episode on Friday. We're talking about all the news and things happening in um, women's professional wrestling, including the turn of Trish Stratus on Becky Lynch, as well as the match that happened between Mercedes, Monet, Hazuki, and Azumi, and what is to come for the uh, retaining IWGP champion with Mayu Iwatani. You don't want to miss what we have to say about that. You can also catch me on our local establishment with my Paramindful show. Um, you want to come and listen to some spooky ooky ish about some spooky stuff? You're going to find me, Carl Carafel, and Alex the Werewolf over there again at our local establishment. And that being said, Andre, do you have anything else you want to say to the beautiful people? No, I just want to say thank you all so very much for tuning in. Please give us a like, a subscribe, a and most of all, a comment down below because we want to hear from you. We love talking to you. We love hearing from you. Please give us an – and i got to give one more thing. A big old mm -hmm. shout-out to Jason Rutledge. Yes. Our boy showed up at the show with a Andre and Melba wrestling talk sign. I so sweet. I, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate all the all the support you've given us. And, and everyone, dressed up like a road warrior. Yes. And oh. then he takes off before I can get a picture with him. Uh. Yeah, because that guy is such a sweetheart and was taking some of the amazing super fans home from the show. He had to get an early start on there because he has a lot of a lot of people to drop off there. So thank you, Jason, again. We love you. I'm going to show up at your, I, I know where you work. I'm showing up at your job and taking a picture with you there. I'm going to have to. You can find him in that slow lane where you can chit chat. Yep. <laughs> so, and we're going to take pictures. We're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and that being said, everyone, I am your Mel Ball. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Mwah.